Hi, welcome to the Jaffa programming tutorial. What we're looking at is sockets, um, um, like communicating over the internet, um, networks, etc. Um, what we've been, what we looked at the last time was the data input stream, and what we were able to do there was pass a whole string message and data types. We could pass integers. We could pass strings, we could pass floats, all the, the data types of Jaffa we could pass. And the stream, as I explained before, was the bytes passed off of, um, the internet or network in the streams from a port. And and that's what the stream done with the data. It sent each data type as bytes and the receiving um, server or the receiving socket from the server would know how to translate that back into its original right type. Well, the object output stream is the same as data input stream um, and it also inherits data input stream. And what it does is it allows you to send objects, and so you can create a class as a prototype, create an instance of that class, and send the whole class off the internet to another computer or in an internet to, a, to another computer and that computer can do something with that program. So a class can be a whole program, it can be like a whole right, set of a whole set of classes all grouped together and you can send programs for someone to use. Um, and so that's what I'm going to show you but there's a difference between the data input stream, the print stream, and the buffered reader. Let's show you this one. Remember the first one we done was the buffered reader and input stream reader and system in. Now the difference from these is we didn't have to implement any classes. But with the object with the object um, input stream you've got to implement if we go to the socket imp implement serializable and what that's doing is that we're serializing an object into data streams so it go, gets sent on a, a, a series and so what you need to do is you need to implement that we've implemented it with that one but we never implemented it here so maybe you don't actually need to implement but as far as I know you do so just going to cut and paste it That's how I implemented it. Uh, I'm not too sure if we covered the um, abstract classes with Java yet. So, um, what we're going to do now is say, so what we've done is we've changed the whole program's the same um, as the data input stream and the buffered reader. Now, but we change the data input stream to object input stream. Um, we create an object of it and we pass it the get input stream from the socket. There and where we accepted um, the connection, and so we give it a name input. And so, what we do is what I've done here is because this is the surfer I've passing object, right? So, we get input from the socket, and when you get input, an object's coming, you've got to cast it to the type of that object and the type of the class, the type is passing object and so what we do is we cast it, it's in brackets and we give the type. That means whatever this is, it's going to be cast to this type to equal this um, and that's something that you've got to do with this. And so we're going to access it within and it's type passing object. And so what we're going to do is just print out um, in and a method from there. Um, and so, and the output, we're going to send it back again. So we're going to say object output stream instead of input stream. And what we're going to do is pass socket get output stream. And so with the name that we're giving it out, we can do write object and pass it in, which we already received from the socket into the server. So this in comes here 
and we send the object back again and the socket's going to receive this and this is communications between the server and the socket and what we're doing is sharing is an object and so we're going to print out OK and close the server and so what I'll show you here is the boss, this is one of the difference out dot right and so with the data input stream for a string we use the right UTF and you can use any one of the data types but the difference here we used write object with writing an object and we also use a read object and it takes an object as an argument that's what we've done here that's a difference and so so that's the server part done so we know that we're going to receive this class that we created to send and in this class all right so we've already done I've, I've got we've already done series um, zero <coughs> I can't even pronounce it now zero riceable um, so we've already done that in this class so maybe that was all we needed to do um, it's called pass an object and it implements this so it can be this here can be serialized and we've got methods we've got like variables a string um, a password which we cannot send that's what this keyword is I'm going to explain that as well and we've initialized them all and we've done from object class method this method is going to print, print out this screen that lets us know that we've actually run this probe this method from another computer because we've passed the whole object to it and this is another one that's going to add these two numbers together which should be 70 yeah and so it will return 70 so we should be able to return this so in the socket we've created an instance of this object and we called it core because we just can call it what we want but this all is the same as before so look at the other tutorials object output stream is we've changed we've changed the the data output stream to object output stream so we can send an object i've used print stream i think we can get away with not using print stream if we go to server um, we didn't use print stream so the, the print stream you can get away with this this is all about getting to know your streams and how you can use them and so that's why I'm giving you different streams so that you've got a better idea of what you can do with these because they're very powerful um, and so and then we'll get get output stream to send to the server and what we're going to send is dot write object again and PO is the instance of this class we're sending so it's going to get the whole object apart from this one here because it's transient this protects it from the you don't want someone else to get your password or someone else's password so if you make them transit and uh, serialized and sent across a network the password will not be sent will not be accessed so that's a good part of it and so what we're going to do is now we've got the input and its data input stream we've changed to object output stream and we sent it the same argument um, as we normally sock for the socket get the input stream and because we're receiving from the server the object that we sent here it's coming back again we cast it to the type that's in the brackets input read object equals in we called it in again and it's of type that and we print out in message we can type out anything we want and so what we're going to do we're going to run the program to see if it works I've already done this it does work so but we're going I'm going to show you so that's us running the server first then we're going to run the socket and this came from the server from object that was a message that was the message it was from object that was the message this is what we sent back from the server we sent this object 
to the server and we sent this object message back okay so so that's what we've got here input dot message this is from the object that we sent to the server and so if I can make this big again and we go to the server part hope this is not taking too long and so the server um, received the object and we ran the from the method which gives you the string from passing object class method print object and if we go here we can see that's this method here so if we go to this the surfer we can see that the, the object input stream got the object um, we cast it input read object cast to that type and we named it in of type that class name and then we done in print object that's that method from this class and that proves that this whole object is sent here and we printed it out and that's what we've seen on the screen there and what we've done is we took the object that we received we created the output stream sent it back to the socket and that's what we received and we sent it back again and when we get back to the socket this is this is the input this is the input here we received it cast it back to to pass an object and then we printed out the message and that's where we've seen the message and what we can do here is we can do dot um, the other method was called print object integer and so if we save run the server and then run the socket and so what year is from server number 70 and so 55 and 15 and 70 so what we've done is is we accessed we turned the object from the server and we ran this method and what this method done this method added these two numbers together which was 55 and 15 which is 70 and so that's us access the whole the whole object we've actually been sending um, an object which can be a whole program over the internet to another computer run that program on another computer sent it back again and accessed it again now this can be used for right, saving data if you're running a program and you have to stop you can you can um, serialize it where all the variables and methods are, um, are, are sent to a and then you open that file up um, load all the variables again and you start that game or that program where you left off with the same score it's the same position all the rest of that so it's quite useful but that's passing objects over the internet or network um, I want to show you the, the this transcend keyword this means that we cannot access the password and let's see if I can prove this to you um, so what I'm going to try to do is do dot password we can see it but I don't think we can actually use it so so let's find out So the server has returned this the we've got 70 returned from the server. Right? So we're going to see what print was printed out from the server. And now was printed out because we had no access to the, the passwords. So that's what that's what transient the keyword transient does, it protects you that's something that you want to protect. Um, and so this keyword is very useful if you're using um, zero iceable um, um, classes. And so again, I hope that's been of some use. Um, and thank you again for your time.